Okay, there we go. Um, so we're going to look at um, uh, rational numbers again. And so this is dealing with uh, fractions. And decimal numbers. And so what we're gonna look at first of all is just looking at a, a number line here. So you can draw a number line. We'll put zero here. The number, numbers that are to the, to the left of the decimal the, on this side, uh, what, what kind of numbers are always on this side of the, the zero? The negatives, yeah. And the far side would always be the, the positive, yeah. So we always know on the, on the left side will be our negative numbers. And on the right-hand side, will be our positive numbers. So in this number line, I'm going to list a bunch of numbers below this. And I want you to rank these on the number line. So where, where would they where would they go? I'd like you to put those roughly on the number line where you think they would where they would go. So which, which number would be the furthest one to the right? Okay. Uh, 8.1, good. So 8.1 would be somewhere over here, right? And then which one would be furthest to the left then? Yep. And you have two. And then some of the other numbers are fairly easy to put in. We kind of know their placement here. So we know four would be kind of maybe over here. Um, now negative, uh, or let's go half here, half would be about here, I guess. Now negative one third, should that, should that be in the blue zone or the red zone? It should be in the blue zone, right? It's kind of hard to know exactly where that would be, but would it be, would it be to the left of negative two or to the right of negative two? Yeah, so we can about here. Okay. Um, and then this negative 0.71, that's kind of tricky. Is that, do you think that's to the left of negative a third or to the right of negative a third? It's to the left, yeah. Um, if, you, if, you, um, if you took one third and just, just take your calculator out right now and just divide that out there. So see what you get there. So you, you can use a calculator. We're, we're gonna use calculator quite a bit here. So I wanna have that handy. Okay. So one divided by three is point. Point three repeating good. Okay. So negative 0 0.7, below, below this seven is like a larger number than three. Because it's negative, it actually is further to the left, right? Negative 0.7 would be somewhere over here. So it's gonna be around maybe. Hard to write that thing. Okay, so in math classes, sometimes we, we represent this uh, by using symbols. Um, uh, and so we use these kind of symbols from, like we, well, you guys might remember, like in grade, probably in grade, uh, I imagine set six, seven, or eight. Uh, if something is, is uh, um, a larger than something else or something is smaller than something else, what, what symbols do we use for those? 
Yeah, they're kind of like they look like almost like arrows on the side, right? So they kind of have these these shapes to them. Now, um, those those two shapes have like when you read them, they actually you're supposed to say a, a certain word to it. So, which one of those symbols means greater than? The one on the left or the one on the right? Which one's here? Left one. So it's, 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 it's hard to hear. I'm sorry. So yeah. So this so this one here is on the left. Um, so this means. Greater than yeah, so this means greater than, and that one means less than. Okay, so when we read this, this whatever we write here, this means greater than. This one means less, less than. So the one on the left is greater than. And the one on the right is less than. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write a statement. You just tell me whether you think it's true or false. Like when I, when I write it, does, does, does it make sense or it does not make sense? So something like. Is that a true or false statement? That's true, right? Five is greater than three, okay? Um, the second statement says negative two is less than negative three. So is that true or false? Well, that's false, right? That's, that's not true, right? That's false. So what, what should I have written if I wanted to make it read correctly? Negative two is greater than negative three. Does that make sense? Okay. Now sometimes students get confused with that because they see the two and the three and they think, well, no, three, three is bigger than two, right? But if you think about the number line, which, which of these two numbers is further to the left? The negative three is further to the left than the negative three. So the further this way you are, the more negative you are, the smaller you are. So if you were a number way down here, like say negative 100, that would be very, very small, right? So that would be a, a negative number. Okay, so um, I'm gonna write a few statements here. I want you guys to, you guys put the right symbol in, okay? So you guys choose a symbol that should go into this, these spots here. So basically we're trying to decide is it, is it a greater than symbol or a less than symbol I should use here with these, these pairs of numbers. So the first three I think aren't too bad, but it does it can get a little tricky when you deal with fractions and stuff. So for the first one, why don't you guys just call it out the six and 14, what, what symbol should I use here? Less than, yeah. So six is less than 14, right? Okay. Uh, negatives, which, which symbol should I use here? Less than, yeah. Negative seven is less than negative uh, three then, okay? And what's when we, say, when we say less than, we're saying further to the left on the number line, right? If we use bigger than, we're saying more to the right on the number line, right? So five is more to the left than negative two or more to the right? More to the right. So the symbol we should use here is greater, right? Okay. Now, some of you guys, your fractional math might be quite good. And so you don't need to do what I'm gonna show next year. But sometimes students do like kind of a strategy to sort of see how you how you could look at these two numbers. Um, if you think about like a quarter and a third of a, like a pie or, or a pizza or something like that, you can kind of in your head vision what that would be. But if, if the numbers get quite tricky, like if we make these numbers like seven and like nine and different numbers up top here, it can get tricky for students to see what is actually uh, bigger or smaller. So one thing that you do is try to find a common denominator and make them over the same numbers to sort of compare them that way. So what, what is the LCD for these two numbers? 12, right? 
So times top and bottom of this one by four, top and bottom of this one by three. So if we do that, we're gonna get four over 12 compared to three over 12. And sometimes that makes it a bit easier to sort of see which is actually the bigger number here. So if you ate four twelfths of a pizza and your friend ate three twelfths of a pizza, who ate more pizza? Four over 12, you give you another slice of this person, right? So the symbol we should use here is greater than, right? So we would say uh, this is greater than that, which means this must be greater than that, right? Now with the negative numbers, it's, it's, that's also a really good strategy, but it can get confusing because of the, the, the effect of negatives. But the LCD here is 15, does that make sense? Well, it's common in our 15. So times top and bottom of this by three, top and bottom of this by five. So we get negative three over 15 compared to negative 10 over 15. Okay, now they're, they're both over 15. So just think about the negative numbers down. It's the trick, right? Negative three, negative 10. Which one is further to the left? Negative, I mean negative. Negative? Negative, negative 10, yeah. The negative, negative 10 would be further to the left, right? If that's not the number line. So if, if once in three and 10, like, well, that seems we'll gravitate to 10. So 10 is bigger though, right? But that's not 10, that's negative 10. So negative 10 is actually smaller than this number. So which of these is a bigger number? That's a bigger number actually, right? So negative three over 15. Now I'm just gonna draw a little picture just to show you that. So let's say that's zero, negative three would be here, negative 10 would be over here, right? So really this is larger than that number. It's a bigger number than 12, okay? So let's just do two more like that and you guys can decide what you think. I think the fractions do cause a bit more uh, difficulty. So let's just make them a little uglier because ugly is good. Um, So I do think these questions would be much easier with a calculator. So it's being one of a fraction using calculators. But the first ones you can kind of do those without a calculator, but this gets pretty hard with a calculator, right? So so for the first one, the LCD would be seven times thirteen, whatever that is, right? Um, so maybe times top and bottom of this by. 13 top and bottom of this by seven. Yeah, so let's see what we got here. So times this by seven over seven, times this by 13 over 13. So 13 times seven is 91. And I would have negative two times 13. So what would that give us on top? Negative 26, yeah. And now over here, I'd have 91 on the bottom here, but now I'd have negative 11 times seven, which is negative 77. And once again, think, think more about which is further to the left here, right? Would negative 26 or negative 77 be one furthest to the left? So that would be further to the left, right? This number is this one bigger than that number or is this less than that number? It's bigger, right? So this number is bigger than that number. And this sec this last question, that would be really hard to do without a calculator. I mean, that's brutal time, right? So I have times top and bottom of this fraction by 31 over 31 and top and bottom of this by 23 over 23, right? So I want to use a calculator here for this. So 31 times 23 is very large. 
seven thirteen over here, so they're out of the same number at least, right? Now I want to do negative eight times thirty one. So that's me negative two hundred and forty eight. And then seventeen times twenty three is negative three hundred and ninety one. Okay. You want to decide which which one is further to the left or further to the right, whichever one is bigger. But this number here, is this number bigger or smaller than that? It's bigger actually, right? It's bigger, right? The bigger number than that. Okay. <clears throat> now I did actually make a little bit of a mistake in the, the one above. Um, is that although, although this is true, if the question really wanted to know what symbol should we put here, right? So since that is really the same thing, I should still say bigger than here, right? Because that, that number really is that number, right? So I should put a bigger than symbol here and a bigger than symbol here. So sometimes you're working with common denominators, you can easily see the numbers which is bigger and smaller, then it's easier to compare sort of thing. So that's one way to do that. Um, Okay, so let's try. I want you to find a fraction. So find a fraction. Between. Give you sort of an easy one first. No, so yes, yeah, so anywhere between. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be right in the middle. It can be just somewhere between those numbers. <clears throat> now, there's actually like a whole bunch of answers to this question here. So there's so there's, there's many things you could write. <clears throat> but if I, if I keep it over 12, it kind of limits how many numbers I'm probably going to be able to write here sort of thing. So I think for the first question, I would just make it all over 12 still, something over 12. So what, what's one possible answer here? Sure. That would work, right? Seven over twelve would have to be between five over twelve and eleven over twelve. Any other answers? Six over twelve, sure. What about nine over twelve? Sure. What about fifty-seven over twelve? No, that would be crazy, right? Um, so uh, um, okay, so lots, lots of different answers are possible for these kind of questions. Okay. Now the next two questions kind of have something in common with the last two questions we did with inequalities. Is it's kind of hard to compare elevenths and sevenths, right? Hard, really hard to compare thirty-firsts and thirty-sevenths, I think, right? Um, and negative numbers here. So I, I would try to make them over the same common denominator. It's going to be easier for you to see what's what would be between them. Then. But you don't have to do it that way. There's lots of different answers for this kind of question. So what would the LCD be for question B then? Seventy-seven. Yeah. So I'm going to put everything over seventy-seven. My two numbers over 77, right? So to make the one on the left look a set like a 77 times top and bottom by sevens. So seven times nine is 63. Okay. And then times the bottom here by 11, top here by 11. So that's 55 over 77. Okay. So basically, all I have to do is just find one number or one fraction that would be between these two numbers. So lots of answers here, right? What's, what's one possible answer? 61 over 77, is that what I heard? 69 over 77? I'm not sure about these, are these, are these right? 61 over, the 61 works, right? What, what about 69? That will not work, right? Yep. 
What's that? 59. 59? Yep. Okay, so it has to be a number between 63 and, and 55, then if, if you're making them over 77, okay. Okay, so for the last one, we could, you know, once again, try to make it over whatever that LCD would be there, I guess, right? So why don't you guys try that, just on your own, see what you, you get there for that one. So the LCD here is quite large, 31 times 37. So 1,147, ay, ay, ay. So I would have had times this one by 37 times top by 37. So negative eight times 37 is negative 296. And timesing this one by 31 would be negative 13 times 31. That's negative 403. So like not using a calculator would be really hard. Like I don't know how you would, well, sorry, you could do longhand math and stuff, right? But great job. Okay, so I'm gonna pick a few people here. You guys just give me one number that would work for us. So, yes. Good. Yes, sir. Uh, two, the two, negative 201, like that there. Okay, don't know if that's right. Okay. Truman? Um, any other ones? Give me one more here. Okay, how about just change that one? What do, what do you think? Negative? You just hit a little louder for me? Yep. So basically, any any number that's going to be between negative two ninety six and four negative four hundred three, right? So, so negative two hundred one would have been too far on that side of that. Okay, so lots of different answers here. So if you get questions where the, the the denominators aren't the same, make them the same denominator, right? It's much easier for you to sort of see what's what's going on there. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the next lesson. I'm going to put all these lessons together. And you guys can leave early today. Okay, so, um, so the next lesson here is section 3.2, which is adding slash subtracting rational numbers. Okay, so I mean, you guys, you guys all know about adding. Oh, so, yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This this is section three point two, and the first one was three point one. So the first section three point one. So three point one, three point two. Okay. Then once again, you guys. Oh, yeah, question. Yep. Three point one. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Three point one. So once again, I know you guys all know how to add. I know you all know how to subtract. Um, but actually, when it comes to rational numbers, a lot of you guys made not a lot of you guys, but some of you guys made small mistakes when it came to some negative signs and how you how you deal with negative signs. Uh, so this is kind of the, the purpose of this section in the, in the chapter, right? Um, and those of you who did you know quite well, um, it's still good to sort of brush up on this because there, there's some mistakes get get made here sometimes. Um, so first of all is um, the statement a plus b. So we're taking two numbers, we're adding them together. Um, so if we think about a number line here, a 
if we, if we place A right here on the number line, so there's, there's where A is. So A is just a number, a rational number. And then we're gonna add another number to that. There's sort of three scenarios that can uh, happen here. One is if B is positive, if B is negative, and if B is zero. So just sort of knowing what to do in these kind of situations if, if B is these different numbers here, okay? Um, so let's use the first case because mo most students are, are very comfortable with this. If let's say you had a, a question like five plus two. So you're getting five and you're adding two to it. So once again, five here, it's really which letter here? It's A, right? We're starting at five, right? And we're saying, this make be positive. So we're gonna add two to this. So I found the number, let's say this was five. So that's five there. And now, now you add two to that number. Which, which way on the number line should you go? You should go to the right of the number line, right? So if you take five, and you add two, you should go two, two numbers over, okay? So we're gonna add a positive value here. Now, I know you guys all know that five plus two is, oh, 17, right, 17? Yes. Yes, yeah, 17, right, <laughs> that, you know, we know five plus two is seven, okay? But the concept here is that if you add a number, add, add a positive number, then we actually move right on the number line. Okay, so you go to the right on the number line. Okay. So if your B value is positive, you would, you would move right two numbers to seven. So now if, if you're adding two numbers, such like say five again, we'll start at five again, and we go plus, so we're still adding, right? But the number we're adding is say negative three. So our B value is a negative number, right? So we started at five, now we're adding negative three. Which, which direction do we actually move? Yeah, we go left now, right? We've left three units, right? So really five plus negative three is really the same thing as five minus three, right? It's five minus three. So by adding a negative number, you're actually subtracting those two numbers. Up. So this would really be five minus three which is really two then, right? So on the number line though, we would have moved left. We moved left on the number line. And if we start at say five, and now let's say we add a number, but the number we add is zero. So we choose zero to add to any number. And what, what, what's, what's the answer obviously? Five, right? So which way did we move? We, we don't move, right? You don't move when you do that, right? So if you ever add a zero to a number, then you do not move. Okay. Now I know once again, I know you guys are okay with adding these kinds of numbers, but I'm just trying to relate this to, to the number line. So if you, if you add a positive number, you go right. If you add a negative number, you go left. If you add a zero, if you don't move, just stay where you are. So let's try just two questions here based on that. Um, let me just draw this on a number line. Once again, I'm sure you guys know what the answer is, but I want you to draw it on a number line, show what's actually happening here. So what's our A value here? Seven, that's where we're starting, right? We're starting at seven. 
And now you're moving left or right here? Left, right? You're adding a negative number, right? So if we add a negative number, it's just the same as moving left, that, that means you just here. Okay. So we need to show that. So we're, we're asking to show that. So one, two. So you go from here over two units, okay. which should give us, let's see, should give us five okay, as a number. Okay. But once again, what we're, what we're more wanting to show is the, is the number, showing your understanding of what's happening with, with this system. Okay. So one more question of this type, um, not too hard out. Um, so let's say negative two, and you're adding negative six. So show that on the number line. Okay. So what's our A value here? Negative two. And we're adding a negative number. So we should go which direction? Left, right? We're gonna go left six units. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. That should take us all the way down to negative eight then. Does that make sense? Is that okay? Okay, so just three rules with adding here. Um, just it might help you with uh, um, some of our more complicated questions. There's sort of, sort of three scenarios you're gonna encounter here. So one is you basically are adding two positive numbers. Or you're adding two negative numbers. Or you're adding a negative and a positive number. So these are the three the three scenarios you're going to encounter when you add two rational numbers together. Okay. So the most uh, sort of obvious one to to solve would be a question like two plus say seven. So we're, here we are adding two positive numbers here in this case. And so this is fairly straightforward for most grade nine students, I would think. Basically, you're starting at two and you're adding seven, so your answer should be nine, right? Um, now, when we add two negative numbers, there's different strategies students use, and I, I noticed on the test, this is where students start making little mistakes sometimes. Um, so let's say you had, uh, let's say, negative three, and you're adding negative four, say, to it. And once again, I, I'm sure you guys can work that out, but there were some students that kept getting these kind of questions wrong. Um, and so what I want just to show you, if you're adding two negative numbers, if you start with a negative number and you add a negative number, which way are you moving? Left. So your answer has to be a what kind of number? It has to be negative, right? So what I would do is I'll just make it negative here. Just add those two numbers now. Just like you did up here, right? So really what's, what's three plus four? Seven. seven. So it has to be negative seven, right? It's a negative number, right? So that might be faster for you. I think what happens is sometimes students think, well, where's negative three? And now I've got to take away four. So that would be, and they start minusing it that way. Don't, don't do it that way. It's way more complicated to do it that way. Just say to yourself, well, this has to be negative. And what's this three plus four? It's, it's seven. So that would be negative seven overall. 
So for example, let's just try one more like that. Let's say you had negative 13 and you're deducting, or you're adding, sorry, because we're adding here, you're adding negative 20. So if I add a negative, which way am I going? I'm going to the left, yeah, I'm the left. So my answer has to be negative, right? And now just add those two numbers together. What, what's 20 plus 13? 33, right? So it's a bit easier maybe, I think, right? So one, one more example, let's try ones that don't match very nice. Let's go negative 12 and you add negative 31. So you're adding two negative numbers. So the answer has to be negative, right? Now, instead, instead, of like, instead of going to negative 12 and trying to take away 31 numbers from it, right? That's, that's hard to do. Just add those two numbers, right? What's, 30, what's 12 plus 31? 43, right? So that, that, that can make it easier to think of it that way. Okay, okay so the last example is you're adding um, a negative number uh, and a positive number together. So you're adding these numbers together. So let's say you have something like um, negative five plus, so that's, that's, that's the negative number. And now the positive number you're going to add is, let's say, seven. So there's sort of two scenarios that can happen here. One is um, if the positive number is larger than the negative number. So for example, the, the negative number here, negative five, that's smaller than the positive number seven. So do you think your answer would be positive or negative here? It should be positive, right? Since the, the positive number is bigger than the negative number, the answer has to be a positive number, right? So we know it's gonna be positive over here. So the answer, answer, it's gonna be positive, right? And now just find the difference of those two numbers then. So what's, what's the difference of five and seven? Two, right? So the answer has to be two then, okay? Now, if it's the other way, let's, let's say you have a number like you have um, say, say 10 and you're adding negative 12. Well here, if the negative number is larger than the positive number. Once again, negative 12 is the negative number and it's the positive number. That's a bigger number than this one. What would the answer have to be? To be negative, right? You can think of it this way too. You're, you're moving to the left 12 units, but you're starting at 10. So you'd have to go below zero to do that, right? And here, you're starting at negative five, you add seven, you have to go above zero. To do that. So that's why you're getting a positive number. So this answer should be what number? Negative two. Just find the difference of those two numbers. Right? So the answer is going to be negative. So here, this would be negative. Negative two then. Let's just try a few questions like that because that th this actually is where students made a lot of mistakes on the last test. It's just uh, weird subtraction rules. So, um, so let's take ten. And we're going to add negative um, eight. Let's take um, negative thirteen, and we're going to add um, seventeen. Take uh, negative 22, and we're going to add 20, and then let's take, let's say, positive 40, and we're going to add negative 62. So 
So I'm going to try to determine whether you're positive or negative first before you do the math on it, right? Is it a positive number or a negative number? Yeah, of course, yeah. But yeah. So for the first one, don't, don't, don't tell me the answer right now, but would this be positive or negative here? Um, positive, right? What about the next one? Positive. Next one? Negative. Negative. And the last one? Negative. Negative, right? Okay. So what's the difference of 10 and 8? 2. But would it be positive 2 or negative 2? Positive. Positive 2, right? And the difference between 13 and 17 is 4. But would it be positive 4 or negative 4? Positive 4. And then the difference between 22 and 20 is 2. But would it be positive 2 or negative 2? Negative 2. Once again, if you're, not, if you're not sure why, this number here is a larger number than that number, it's negative. So you're starting at negative 22 and you're moving right 20 units, you still be below zero if you did that, right? Here you're starting at 40, but you're moving left 62 units. So would that make it negative or positive? Negative, right. And then the difference of those two numbers is 22. That number there. Does that make sense? Okay, sort of, kind of, a little bit. Okay, so one last little topic and then we're done. Um, and that is, um, where's here? Subtracting rational numbers. So um, this would be something like a minus B. Okay. And remember, the, what, what we just did above was A plus B, right? As we did before, right? So if we do A plus B, I'm going to quickly review this. If we do A plus B, let's say B is positive. Which way do we move? Right. If we do A plus B and B is negative, which way do we move? Left. If B is zero, we stay the same. We don't. Okay. So what's what's handy about this? If you're subtracting a number. It's the complete opposite. Yeah. So basically, this is the same as a plus negative b. So basically, we're just we're just kind of doing the opposite rules now for this. So, for example, if you have four minus seven, so we know the answer here is negative three, right? But this should be the same as four plus negative. Oopsie, negative seven. So if we if we add a negative, which way do we move? Left, right? If we subtract a number, we move left. It's right? so the same same concept here, right? So adding a negative would give us negative three. Then. And so if you just, let's say you had um, five minus two, well, we know the answer to five minus two is three. But I want you to write it as an addition statement. Use a plus sign here to do that. Okay. So we're still starting at which number? Or what, what's our A value, sorry, five. So we're still starting at five. Now, when you minus two, you're going left, right? So it would be the same thing as five plus negative two, right? Which gives us three. Let's do one more example here. So we're gonna say negative seven minus eight equals. So let me tell me what that is. 
And I also want you to write it as an addition statement. So I'm going to skip over the first question, just go straight to the addition statement right here. What's, what's our A value here? Negative seven. So we're starting at negative seven. And we're really adding what number to it? Does that make sense? Okay. So imagine you're starting at negative, let's see, okay, negative seven. Now, when you, when you add a negative number, which way are you actually going? going left, right? You're going to move it eight units this way, right? So if you go eight units that way, where does, where does that take you to? Negative 15. So the answer here should be negative 15, and the answer here should be negative 15, okay? Now, once again, I know you guys are pretty good addition subtraction stuff, but sometimes uh, trying to write it as an addition statement can be tricky for students to sort of see what's actually going on here. But when you, when you deduct a number, you minus a number, you're going left, right? So if you add a negative number, you must also be going left, right? You're going left direction. So one last question of this type then. Let's see how you do here. This is kind of a fun one. All the kids enjoy it. Uh, negative seven plus two minus three minus negative five. I do it in steps here. There's a lot of different signs here and stuff like that. Okay. And once you have your answer, I want you to write it as an addition statement. That's actually quite tricky to do that, especially with the last thing. Right? Make them all pluses, yeah. Anywhere, anywhere you're subtracting, turn into a plus sign. Yeah, that's, that's tricky to do that. So let's just go across uh, negative seven plus two. Would that make it get bigger or smaller? Get bigger. We would go to the right, right? So that would that would give us negative five, right? Then you add, then you take away three. Then you do negative eight. I, I, I might write, write that down. My brain's already here. So, uh, so that's going to be negative five minus three minus negative five. You guys said that's negative eight. And I'm minusing negative five. I'm taking away a negative number. So when I, when I, when I take away a number, which way do I go? I go to the left, right? But if I take away a negative number, I'm actually going to the right, which means I'm actually adding or subtracting here. I'm actually adding here, right? So you have negative eight plus five, which would be negative three. So that's kind of tricky, that one. That's the tricky one. Okay. So if I write it as an addition statement, I'm starting at negative seven. Okay. I'm adding two, so that, that's still adding, right? But now I'd want to add how much? Oh, so, so, so here's negative seven plus two, subtracting three, which means I'm really adding. Adding negative three. Right? So I'm, I turn this to a plus sign. And this one here, that's going to become a plus sign. Now, if I subtract negative five, I'm actually adding how much? I'm actually adding five to the same. Number. 
So when I go negative seven plus two, is that left or right? That's right two. So negative seven, right two would be negative five. Then when I add a negative, I'm actually going left or right. But so I'm at negative five, and then I go left to three, which would be negative eight. Then I add a positive, which is I go right to five. So negative eight plus five would be negative three. So I would say this is probably the trickiest part for students is trying to change it to plus signs to see what that actually would look like. Okay. Um, okay, so that's us done. I'm going to just uh, stop something here. Pause that for a second. I'll put that screen back up.